The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints From Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a religious organization that views itself as the restoration of the original Christian church founded by Jesus during his earthly ministry. Sometimes referred to as the LDS Church or the Mormon Church, the Church teaches that God the Father and Jesus Christ appeared to Joseph Smith, Jr. and called him to be a prophet and to restore essential elements that were lost from Christianity between Paul's death and the First Council of Nicaea. These elements included new scriptures, the calling of twelve apostles as special witnesses of Christ's divinity, and the return of priesthood authority. The Church was organized by Smith and five others in Fayette, New York, on April 6, 1830 shortly after the first publication of the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith led the church until he was killed in 1844. After a brief period of confusion, when various claims of succession were made, the church was led by the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles until a new First Presidency was organized in 1847. Brigham Young, president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and soon to be president of the church, led a large group of Mormon pioneers in a forced exodus away from the former church headquarters in Nauvoo, Illinois, and eventually to the Salt Lake Valley in July 1847. An international organization, the church has its world headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah, where 96-year-old Gordon B. Hinckley serves as the 15th president and is considered the world's modern prophet and mouthpiece for Jesus Christ. The Church sends tens of thousands of male and female missionaries throughout the world, and in 2005 reported a worldwide membership of over 12.5 million. History The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches that it was organized by Joseph Smith in Fayette, New York. Joseph Smith led the Church until his death in 1844. The Church was then led by Brigham Young, who led members west to Salt Lake City, Utah. Currently, the Church is led by Gordon B. Hinckley. Early History The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized in Fayette, New York, on April 6, 1830, under the leadership of Joseph Smith, Jr. Smith was raised in northwestern New York, where he reported a number of heavenly visions and visitations by angels. According to his own account, while he was an adolescent during the early 1820s, Smith saw God the Father and Jesus Christ in what is now known as the First Vision. Smith also said he was told where to find an ancient record referred to as the Golden Plates from an angel named Moroni, and dictated a translation of those plates, which he published in 1830 as the Book of Mormon. According to Smith and his close associate, Oliver Cowdery, an angel gave both of them the authority to baptize and to build up a new church, meant to be a restoration of first-century Christianity. This church, originally called the Church of Christ, was formed in April 1830 in Manchester or Fayette, New York, but soon after the conversion of Church of Christ, Campbellite, Minister Sidney Rigdon in Kirkland, Ohio, most of its members moved to Ohio in 1831. In Ohio, the church built a temple and sent missionaries to various places, including Jackson County, Missouri, where the church built up branches. After a series of financial problems with Kirtland Safety Society, a bank, the main body of members moved briefly to Missouri in 1838, but after the 1838 Mormon War, they were forced to establish a new center in Nauvoo, Illinois. In Nauvoo, the church grew rapidly, began building a temple, and sent out missionaries to Canada and England. Smith served as a religious, political, and military leader. In 1844, after a conflict with an egg antagonistic newspaper over Smith's alleged practice of spiritual wifery, Smith and his brother Hiram were arrested, taken to Carthage, Illinois, and then both of them were killed by a mob on June 27, 1844. In the aftermath of the deaths of Smith and his brother Hiram, he presumed successor. Several church leaders campaigned to lead the church, a time known as the Succession Crisis. The Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, led by Brigham Young, claimed succession. The apostles quickly returned from their missions in America and abroad and were accepted as successor by the largest body of adherents. Establishment in Utah In 1846, Brigham Young led a large group of Mormon pioneers out of Nauvoo, Illinois, to Winter Quarters, Nebraska, and eventually to the Salt Lake Valley, initially part of Mexico but soon annexed by the United States as the Utah Territory, where the first company arrived on July 24, 1847. Isolated from any neighbors, Brigham Young initially governed the Utah Territory as a theocracy, and under his direction many colonizing groups were sent to various sites to begin settlements in what was referred to as the State of the Deseret. In 1857, however, federal troops replaced him with a non-Mormon territorial governor, in a period called the Utah War, or Buchanan's Blunder. 
Beginning in 1852 and contributing substantially to the Utah War, many prominent church leaders began openly practicing a previously secret form of polygamy called plural marriage. Because plural marriages were viewed as immoral by mainstream Americans, the U.S. government began passing laws in the 1870s and 1880s criminalizing the practice, despite Mormon pro protestations that such marriages were protected by the United States Constitution. Under the new laws, church leaders were imprisoned and the church was disincorporated and its manifesto prohibited future plural marriages. And the church issued a second manifesto in 1904 by President Joseph F. Smith, Eventually, the church adopted a policy for excommunicating polygamist members. The church's abandonment of polygamy led to a formation of several schismatic groups that still embrace the practice. Growth into an international church Since the beginning of the 20th century, the church has undergone a period of nearly exponential growth due to a high birth rate and extensive proselytism. Additionally, the church has gained more prominence and has taken firm stands on a number of social issues, supporting prohibition, opposing gambling, opposing abortion with some exceptions, opposing same-sex marriage, and opposing euthanasia. The Church also maintains a position of political neutrality and on the issue of stem cell research, but is a staunch supporter of civic involvement. Church membership has increased dramatically in third-world non-speaking, non-English-speaking countries, and in 1978, due to a revelation from the Prophet of God, the Church ended the, pol the policy of African descent being denied admission to the priesthood. The Utah church leadership remains largely white and North American, whereas the leadership throughout the world is made up primarily of members of respective countries and races. Beliefs and Practices The church teaches that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who taught all his gospel and the way to return to live with God the Father. Christ's birth, atonement, death, and resurrection provide the means whereby God's children can be resurrected and redeemed from their sins through repentance. The Church teaches that, after the death of Christ and his apostles, some important doctrinal teachings were changed over time from Christ's original teachings, thus necessitating a restoration of his Church and true doctrines before the Second Coming. The Prophet Joseph Smith, Jr. The Church teaches that Jesus Christ and the God the Father appeared to Joseph Smith, Jr. to begin the reestablishment of Christ's Church on earth, as prophesied in Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. Joseph Smith, Jr. wrote that Christ had called him to be a latter-day prophet, to tell people of the gospel message, and to restore the authority from Christ to perform acts in his name. According to the leaders of the church, the unique doctrines taught by the church are as a result of revelations received from God by Joseph Smith, Jr. and his successors. Nature of God The church teaches of Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. They are three separate and distinct beings who together constitute the Godhead, united in purpose rather than in substance. All three members of the Godhead are eternal and equally divine, but have different roles. While the Holy Ghost is a spirit without a physical body, God the Father and Christ both possess distinct, perfected, physical bodies of flesh and bone. God the Father is the Spirit Father in pre-mortal life of all the spirits, of all the people who are, have been, or will be born on this earth. He is also both the Spirit Father and the Father in the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is thus the only begotten Son, inheriting from his Father power over death. Since Christ is omniscient and has the same purpose as the Father, the Church teaches that Jesus Christ speaks often of the Scriptures as though knowing perfectly the will and the words of the Father. Non-Trinitarianism is a point of disagreement with Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant traditions. Purpose of Life the term plan of salvation is used by the LDS Church to describe how the gospel of Jesus Christ is designated to bring about the immortality and eternal life of mankind. The first element, immortality, is explained as a gift freely given to everyone, made possible by Jesus' resurrection. The Church teaches that the spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form, even as we now are at this time. The restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not so much as a hair of the heads be lost, but everything that shall be restored to its perfect frame. The second element, salvation from sin and spiritual death, is explained as being possible only by the atonement of Jesus Christ, where washes clean the metaphorical stains of one's imperfections, and justifies and sanctifies one for admission into heaven. 
The kingdom within heaven for which each person is qualified is conditional upon acceptance of and true faith in Jesus Christ as the Savior and Redeemer of mankind, which is demonstrated through baptism and obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel, including repentance. After death, people who have not been offered the chance to hear the doctrines of Jesus Christ during life on earth will have the opportunity to do so prior to the judgment. All of humanity will then be resurrected and judged by Jesus. As part of this judgment, each person is assigned to one of three heavenly kingdoms, sometimes called degrees of glory, the celestial kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, and the telestial kingdom. Finally, the church teaches that there will be very few people who, after gaining a full knowledge of the gospel, willfully deny and contend against the Holy Ghost. They will inherit no glory. This state is referred to as outer darkness and are called sons of perdition. Although resurrected and thus immortal, these people willfully rebelled and chose not to receive any salvation. Eschatology Latter-day Saint teaches millennialism, in which after a period of tribulation, the second coming of Jesus will occur, followed by a thousand years of peace, after which will occur the last judgment. Distinctive within Latter-day Saint millennialism, however, is the idea that Jesus will reign personally upon the earth, which can be found in the Articles of Faith, uh, chapter 1 verse 10 and the direct uh, and direct the government or governments that will exist Jackson County Missouri is expected to have an important LDS temple during the millennium and Jerus Jerusalem is expected to be an important center of government in the world as the earth transitions into the millennial period only those good and honorable people who stand to inherit the celestial kingdom or terrestrial kingdom will continue on the earth because of because all others will either repent or die by means of disasters and in fighting among themselves. Theology of Family and Gender The LDS Church teaches that, through the ordinances of the restored gospel, families can be sealed together so that spouses may remain together after death, and live continually, eternally. LDS doctrine also teaches that children continue in that familial bond in the afterlife. Only marriages and sealings performed in LDS temples will continue after death. Therefore, the Church teaches that all who qualify will be sealed by proxy, where living people are sealed vicariously on behalf of those who have died without being sealed. Because of these beliefs, the LDS Church places a strong emphasis on the importance of the family to individuals in society. In particular, the Church views the nuclear family, father, mother, and children, as the most important single unit in the Church, as well as in society. In 1995, the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve Apostles pu published a, The Family, a Proclamation to the World, a document explaining major LDS doctrine concerning the family. LDS church leaders and doctrine support the uh, traditional definitions of family and marriage, including opposing same-sex marriage and supporting the Federal Marriage Amendment. In the early part of the 20th century, church members were counseled to set aside Monday night as a time to dedicate to their families. No other church meetings were to be held on this night, and the church still encourages members to meet Monday nights in a family home evening to pray, read scriptures, and engage in other familial and recreational activities. Priesthood The LDS Church teaches that the authority to act in God's name is called the priesthood. All worthy male members of the church may hold the priesthood and are expected to use it righteously to serve and bless their families and others. Holding the priesthood is a stated prerequisite to hold offices within the hierarchy of the church as the priesthood provides the authority to officiate and preside over the church or portions of the church. The church further teaches that this authority was given to Joseph Smith by Peter, James, and John. Smith was instructed to organize the church and to confer the priesthood on others. The LDS Church holds Gordon B. Hinckley as the successor to Smith and the person who has the priesthood authority to preside over and receive rev revelation for the church as a whole. The Church teaches that one such revelation was received by Spencer W. Kimball in 1978 when he directed that all worthy men be ordained to the priesthood. This changed a long tradition from 1849 until 1978 that men of African descent were not permitted to receive the priesthood or marry in the temple, although they could become members and hold callings within the Church. See Blacks and Mormonism. In the early days of the Church, women sometimes gave blessings to the sick, which is generally considered a priesthood ordinance. Also, some women claimed to hold the priesthood though their hus through their husbands because of temple ordinances. The Church teaches that women cannot receive the priesthood, but that God listens to the prayers of his daughters. Consequently, the 
not ordaining women to the priesthood has caused some contention with the feminist movement. See women in Mormonism. The LDS Church also teaches that the priesthood is divided into two parts, the Aaronic priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood. The Aaronic priesthood, also called the Levitical priesthood, is considered to be a lesser priesthood, tracing its roots to Aaron, the brother of Moses, through John the Baptist. Joseph Smith Jr. and Oliver Cowdery said they received this priesthood on May 15, 1829, when they were ordained by John the Baptist. In 1835, Smith and Cowdery clarified that this authority was the Aaronic or Levitical priesthood. The Melchizedek priesthood, or the Holy Priesthood, after the order of the Son of God, is recognized as a higher order of priesthood, or the High Priesthood, and traces its roots to Melchizedek, who was such a great high priest. This priesthood uh, was thought to be the order of priesthood held by Jesus, and a distinction is made between the Aaronic and the Melchizedek priesthoods, which derives in part from the Epistle to the Hebrews, whose author argues that Jesus arose after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Aaron. Ordinances Latter-day Saint sacraments are called ordinances. Latter-day Saints believe in two types of ordinances, saving ordinances and non-saving ordinances. Saving ordinances, such as baptism, confirmation, the endowment, Latter-day Saints, and sealing, are required for entry into the celestial kingdom. Non-saving ordinances include various types of blessings and the sacrament, the Latter-day Saint version of the Eucharist. Ordination to a priesthood office is also considered to be an ordinance. The Church practices baptism by immersion in water. Baptism is symbolic of burial, resurrection, and spiritual rebirth as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The Church teaches that a person who truly repents and is baptized has all prior sins remitted through divine grace. A person is eligible for baptism beginning at age 8. According to the Church doctrine, the age of 8 was given in Latter-day Saint Revolution as the age where children become accountable for their sins, that is, they are able to discern between right and wrong. If a person is unable to distinguish between right and wrong, example those with severe intellectual impairment, he or she is viewed as fully saved through the atonement of Christ. The Book of Mormon and modern revelation specifically forbid the practice of infant baptism. Baptism is recognized only when performed by holding at least the office of a priest in the Aaronic priesthood. Thus, baptisms from other churches are not accepted because they have not been performed by those holding the restored priesthood of the New Testament. Following baptism by immersion, individuals are confirmed members of the church and given the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands by priesthood bearers. This blessing entitles the newly confirmed recipient to have the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost as a guide and guardian so long as the recipient lives worthy of the gift. Accompanying this gift are the gifts of the Spirit, enumerated in the 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to 13 and Doctrine and Covenants chapter 46 and Moroni chapter 10, emphasized in this last chapter of the Book of Mormon. Members believe that those who have not been confirmed may still receive inspiration and a witness from the Holy Ghost, but are not entitled to the constant companionship available through the gift of the Holy Ghost. Donations and Time of Service Latter-day Saints have a high degree of participation outside of worship services. Active church membership generally entails missionary work, family history, participation in church callings, family home evening, and payment of tithes. Other forms of charity are encouraged, including donations of money, clothing, and time. The church teaches its members should be self-sufficient and avoid falling into debt. The Law of Tithing states that members are expected to give 10% of their income to the church, these funds are used to build meeting houses and other buildings, to cover operating costs, educa education, produce materials for use in church classes and organizations, support the missionary program, and to support family history work and other church functions. Fast offerings, named for their collection each month after fasting for two meals, are generally expected to be, to be a minimum of the cost of food for the monthly day of fast practiced by members and go towards humanitarian aid. Payment of a generous fast offerings is highly recommended. Lifestyle Code The Church has a lifestyle code, which includes the Word of Wisdom, a health code, the Law of Chastity, and a requirement to obey the laws of the country in which the member lives. The Church condemns abortion and encourages a standard of modesty. Members with gay, lesbian, or bisexual identity are officially welcomed into the Church, but only if they remain celibate or heterosexually married and monogamous. 
Transgendered persons are officially accepted into the church, but may not hold a priesthood office if they are post-operative or if they are considering sexual reassignment surgery. See the 1999 Church Handbook. Church members who fail to live the church lifestyle code may, in more serious cases, be subjected to church disciplinary, disciplinary action, including disfellowshipment or excommunication. The church considers serious cases to include felonies, abortion, drugs, non-heterosexual or non-married sex, apostasy, or public and vocal criticism of church leaders. Sacred Texts and Other Publications The church accepts as canon the Bible, as far as it is translated correctly, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. The four are considered the standard works. The church also publishes numer numerous periodicals, manuals, and sometimes proclamations, which are not scripture, but clarify its teachings. Holy Bible The church has articulated its position on the Bible. In the words of Joseph Smith, we believe the Bible to be a word of God as far as it is translated correctly. Smith used the King James Version of the Bible, KJV, but considered the translation to have errors. Thus he began the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, sometimes called the Inspired Version. The Church considers the King James Version as the appropriate translation for English-speaking adherents, and includes portions of Smith's efforts at Bible translation in the footnotes or appendices to the version of the Bible it prints. The translation recommended by the Church varies for different languages. Book of Mormon, Another Testament of Jesus Christ The Book of Mormon, Another Testament of Jesus Christ, is also considered canon. The book is named after one of the prophet historians, Mormon, who, according to the text, compiled most of the book. It was first published by Joseph Smith, Jr. in March 1830 in Palmyra, New York. The, the book describes itself as being written by ancient prophets of the Western Hemisphere, who traveled there from an ancient Israel circa 600 B.C., the Church teaches that Smith translated the record by divine inspiration with assistance from the Urim and Thummim and from gold plates that were delivered to him by an angel. Smith said he returned the plates to the angel identified as Moroni. Doctrine and Covenants First published in 1835, the Doctrine and Covenants is a collection of revelations, policies, letters, and statements given to the modern Church, mostly by Smith. This record contains Church doctrines as well as direction on Church government. It is also considered to be canon. The Pearl of Great Price The Pearl of Great Price is a compilation of several books. The Book of Moses, which contains an excerpt from Smith's translation of Genesis. Joseph Smith Matthew contains his translation of Matthew 24. And the Book of Abraham, which derives from Egyptian papyrus that came into Smith's possession in 1835. Joseph Smith History is an excerpt from the documentary history of the church containing a letter written by Joseph Smith in 1838. Lastly, the Articles of Faith is an excerpt from another of Smith's letters, which contain 13 statements of belief and doctrine. The Pearl of Great Price completes the church's canon. Non-canonical publications The Ensign is an official magazine of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The magazine was first issued in January 1971, along with The New Era for Youth and The Friend for Children, all of which replaced the older church publications Improvement Era, Relief Society Magazine, Women's Exponent, and The Instructor, and The Millennial Star. Unlike some of its predecessors, the Ensign contains no advertisements. Content includes faith-promoting and personalizing information, stories, and sermons. Semi-annually, the Ensign gives a full report of the proceedings of the annual and semi-annual LDS General Conferences of the Church. It contains the full text of the talks and businesses of the conferences, as well as a current photographic list of the highest officers of the Church, referred to as the General Authorities. Liahona is also the name of the official international magazine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, named after an object used to guide the people in the Book of Mormon. The Liahona is the regularly published in 15, 50 different languages from 2 to 12 times a year, depending on the language. It contains material that is mostly for adult, adults and is translated from articles in the Ensign magazine. It also contains stories from the New Era and Friend for readers of the respective age groups. Deseret Management Corporation, a for-profit company which is owned by the church, operates several companies which publish material. Deseret Book, 
Deseret Book is an independently managed and publishes under four imprints in different media. Published materials include doctrinal non-fiction books, LDS fiction books, electronic resources, and sound recordings. Deseret Book also owns a chain of LDS bookstores in the western United States. Deseret Morning News Utah's second largest daily newspaper is published in Salt Lake City, Utah, and is Utah's oldest continually published daily newspaper. The newspaper is printed by Newspaper Agency Corporation, which it co-owns with the Salt Lake Tribune under a joint operating agreement. Deseret News also publishes a weekly publication, the LDS Church News, which is included each Saturday and distributed by mail as a separate publication outside Utah. Bonneville International owns and independently manages one television and over three radio stations in eight cities within the United States. Worship and Culture Weekly worship services, including sacrament meetings, are held on Sundays or Saturday where local custom law prohibits Sunday worship. In neighborhood-based religious units, and twice each year, the church holds a worldwide general conference. Congregations for Sunday services are grouped geographically, with larger, about 200 to about 400 people, congregations known as wards, and uh, smaller, two through about 200 people, congregations known as branches. These neighborhood congregations meet in meeting houses, also referred to as chapels or stake centers, on property most often owned by the church. In some geographic areas, rental property may be used as a meeting house. Although the building may sometimes be referred to as a chapel, the room used for chapel religious services is actually only one component of the standard meeting house. All persons, regardless of their beliefs or their standing in or out of the church, are allowed to attend. The sacrament, similar to the communion, the Lord's Supper, or the Eucharist in other churches, is offered weekly to the members of the church, except on Mondays, which are reserved for family home evening, members meet in the meeting houses for various activities throughout the week. Women usually attend wearing skirts or dresses, while men wear suits or dress shirts, preferably white and ties. Children are also typically in their Sunday best. Temple Worship Two years after the organization of the church in 1832, Joseph Smith, Jr. reported receiving a revelation that called upon church members to build a house of the Lord and restore the practice of temple worship. Doctrine and Covenants 124 verse 31 The church built its first temple in Kirtland, Ohio in 1836. This temple was used primarily for instruction and learning. In 1846, the Nauvoo Temple was built in Nauvoo, Illinois. With this temple came the introduction of special ordinances, such as the endowment and baptism for the dead. When the saints moved west to Utah, they were forced to abandon these temples. The Nauvoo Temple was destroyed by fire, and the Kirtland Temple is owned by the Community of Christ. Soon after the arrival of the saints in the Rocky Mountains, they began building several temples, including the well-known Salt Lake Temple, which took more than 40 years to complete. The church continued to build temples as membership grew. Currently, there are 124 operating temples, six under construction, and five announced, not yet under construction. Today, in addition to Sunday worship, faithful members of the church are encouraged to attend temples and participate in ordinances there, such as baptism for the dead. The church teaches that certain temple ordinances, including being married in the temple, are necessary for eternal exaltation. The church also regards the temples as places of peace and refuge that are set apart from the world. Adult members who have performed a temple ordinance called an endowment also receive a temple garment, which they wear under their daily clothing. The church considers the temple ordinances exceptionally sacred and does not discuss them publicly. Non-members or members without a temple recommend are not permitted to attend or observe these ordinances. However, the general public, member or non-member, is invited to attend an open house of the temple prior to its dedication. General Conference Twice a year, spring and autumn, the church holds General Conference, in which the prophet and other leaders speak from Temple Square in Salt Lake City, Utah. These talks, given in several sessions over two days, are carried worldwide by radio, television, satellite, and internet broadcasts. They are translated into numerous languages and are later made available on DVD, complete with translations, and also printed in church publications such as Ensign and Liahona. Attendees come from around the world. Conference talks address doctrinal topics drawn from scriptures and personal experiences, messages of faith and hope, church history and information on the church as it expands throughout the world. Throughout the 20th century, conference talks were given from the Salt Lake Tabernacle. With a maximum capacity of about 8,000 per session, the tabernacle would be filled and about thousands of other attendees would sit on blankets on Temple Square lawns. 
In 2001, the LDS Conference Gen- Conference Center was opened, and since that time, talks have been given in the center's 22,000-seat main auditorium. Conference satellite broadcasts may be watched live in thousands of chapels worldwide. The public is invited to attend general conference, either as these broadcasts in the conference center or other areas at Temple Square. Culture Due to the differences in lifestyle promoted by church doctrine and history, a distinct culture has grown up around members of the church. It is primarily concentrated in the Rocky Mountains, but as membership of the church spreads around the world, many of its more distinctive practices, such as the following of the Word of Wisdom, a health code prohibiting the consumption of tobacco, alcohol, tea, and coffee, and other addictive substances, follow. Because of the prohibition on such things as tobacco and alcohol, the culture and high Mormon populations reflect these restrictions. The church discourages gambling in all forms, including lotteries. Meetings and outreach programs are held regularly and have become part of the Latter-day Saint culture. Young Men and Women Young men and women aged 12 to 18 often have additional meeting house meeting during the week, previously referred to as Mutual or MIA, which were short for Mutual Improvement Association, which can involve an activity, game, service project, or instruction. The young men and women may meet separately or take part in a combined activity. Usually the young men participate in scouting, including efforts to gain the Duty to God Award and an award unique to the LDS Church on my honor. Young women participate in a program titled Personal Progress. Both the young women and the young men try to live by the standards outlined in For the Strength of Youth. Institute of Religion There are several LDS institutes of religion in the United States which are mostly close to colleges and universities. There are several religion classes which are offered for free in those institutes. Besides that, it is a place for young students to associate with other young Latter-day Saints and have activities. Home, Family, and Personal Enrichment Four times a year, the adult women, members of the Church's Relief Society, attend a Home, Family, and Personal Enrichment meeting, formerly known as Homemaking Meeting. The meeting may consist of a service project, or of attending a social event, or of various classes being offered. In addition, enrichment activities are offered, weekly, monthly, or as determined by Ward Relief Society leaders, for women with special needs and interests. Social Events and Gatherings In addition to these regularly scheduled meetings, additional meetings are frequently held at the meeting house. Auxiliary officers may conduct leadership meetings or host training sessions and classes. The ward or branch community may schedule social activities at the meeting house, including dances, dinners, holiday parties, and musical presentations. Other popular activities are basketball, family history conferences, youth and singles conferences, dances, and various personal improvement classes. Church members may also reserve the building for personal or family use to accommodate such events as music recitals, family reunions, weddings and receptions, birthdays, or funerals. Church Organization and Leadership Name of the Church When the Church was organized in 1830, it was called the Church of Christ. It was also referred to as the Church of Latter-day Saints to differentiate the Church of this uh, era from that of the New Testament. It was generally known by that name between 1834 and 1838. In April 1838, the full name was stated as Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. When the church was incorporated in 1851, the legal documents used current standardizing spelling and punctuation, capitalizing the first article, the, and hyphenating Latter-day. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There was no standard spelling or punctuation for its official title in church publications prior to 1851, so the may sometimes be capitalized or sometimes not in early publications. The Church commonly uses the word the as part of its official's name, official name as opposed to modifying to a modifying article. The Church is also known as the LDS Church and the Mormon Church. Church members are known as Mormons or Latter-day Saints, both being appellations accepted among Latter-day Saints themselves. The nickname Mormon arose soon after the publication of the Book of Mormon in 1830. Although originally used pejoratively, the re- to refer to the church or its members, the term came to be used widely within the church. The church requests that the official name, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, be used where possible, stating the full name was given by revelation from God to Joseph Smith in 1838. It also encourages the use of the church, or the Church of Jesus Christ, as shortened references, although LDS Church is commonly used within the church's own publications, and the church officially uses Mormon as a descriptive term for itself in the name of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. 
When referring to members of the church, it suggests Latter-day Saints is preferred, although Mormons is acceptable. Despite these efforts, the Associated Press continues to recommend Mormon Church as a proper second reference in its style guide for journalists. Legal Entities The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was formally incorporated in 1851. That corporation, however, was dissolved by an act of the United States Congress in 1887 because of the church's practice, now abandoned, of polygamy. Thereafter, the church has continued to operate as an unincorporated religious association. However, the church has organized several tax-exempt corporations to assist with the transfer of money and capital. These include the Corporation of the Presiding Bishop of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, organized in 1916 under the laws of the state of Utah, to acquire, hold, and dispose of real property. In 1923, the Church incorporated the Corporation of the President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Utah to receive and manage money and church donations. In 1997, the Church incorporated Intellectual Reserve Incorporated to hold all the Church's copyright, trademarks, and other intellectual property. Priesthood Hierarchy The Church has a hierarchy, with clearly defined responsibilities or stewardship for the different priesthood offices. The leader of the Church is termed President, whom the members revere as the prophet, seer, and revelator. He is seen as holding the same divine calling as prophets mentioned in the scriptures and has stewardship over the church as a whole. He is entitled to receive revelation from God to guide the church and the world as his mouthpiece. The president of the church serves as such until death. Historically, the senior apostle has become the new president of the church. Gordon B. Hinckley is the current president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The First Presidency, the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and the First and Second Quorums of the Seventy are all known as general authorities because they are the people who direct the work of the entire church throughout the world. Other authorities of the church who are limited in their geographical areas of authority are referred to as area or local authorities and include all Quorum of the Seventy, Mission Presidents, Stake Presidents, Bishops, and other Quorum Presidents. The church has no salaried minister ministry, However, general authorities who demonstrate need to receive a strip stripend from the church using income from church-owned investments. All area and local authorities, as well as holders of all other positions, are unpaid and continue in their normal occupations while serving in leadership positions. See laity. As the church teaches that revelation from God continues today, conflicts could result from the claimed revelations of different members. Thus, the principle of stewardship defines in what capacity a person may receive revelation. Divine revelation for the direction of the entire church comes from God to the president of the church. Revelation for the direction of a stake comes from the God to the stake president of that stake. Bishops are entitled to, to revelation from God for their ward. Parents are entitled to revelation for raising their families. And each member is entitled to v divine revelation for themselves, the confirmation of truths, gaining knowledge or wisdom, meeting personal challenges, etc., because of their belief in modern revelation, Latter-day Saints give significant weight to the official pronouncements of their church leaders. They consider the words spoken by the prophets and general authorities speak as moved upon by the Holy Ghost, as modern-day scripture, and members are encouraged to ponder and pray for revelation regarding the truthfulness of such statements. Relief Society and Women's Status The Relief Society and the Women's Organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints founded in 1842 in Nauvoo, Illinois, the organization with the motto Charity Never Faileth, today includes more than 5 million women in over 165 countries. The status of women in church leadership positions remains largely unchanged since the early 1900s. Women have been given leadership roles over other, over other women, children, and in providing welfare. In a few other situations, women will preside over some men, such as in primary, in the Meeting House Library, or at a Family History Library. Since the 1840s, women have officiated for men in certain priesthood ordinances, ritual ceremonies, but only as a part of the endowment ceremony inside temples. Current Membership The Church reports a worldwide membership of 12,560,869 as of December 31, 2005, with 6.7 million members residing outside the United States. It is the fourth largest religious body in the United States. The church membership report includes all baptized members and also children of record, unbaptized children under the age of eight. Children are not baptized before the age of eight. Members living in the U.S. and Canada constitute 47% of membership, Latin America 36%, 
and members in the rest of the world 17 percent. A survey by the City College of New York in 2001 extrapolated that there were 2,787,000 self-identified LDS adults in the United States in 2001, an increase of 1.3 percent over their 1991 survey, making the LDS Church the tenth largest religious body in their phone survey of over 50,000 households. Finances The Church receives most of its funding from tithes and fast offerings. About 10% of its funding also comes from income on its investments in real estate holdings. Holdings The Church has holdings in real estate, as well as for-profit businesses managed through Deseret Management Corporation, estimated in 1996 at more than $30 billion. Some of the Church's known holdings include AG Reserves Incorporated, Salt Lake City, Utah, the largest producer of nuts in America, Beneficial Life Insurance Company, assets at $1.6 billion, Bonneville International Corporation, the 14th largest radio chain in the U.S., Deseret Morning News, a daily Utah newspaper, second largest in the state, Farmland Reserve Incorporated, 228,000 acres, that's 923 kilometers squared in Nebraska, and over 312,000 acres, or 1,260 kilometers square in Florida. Polynesian Cultural Center in Hawaii, the leading for-profit visitor attraction in Hawaii. Use of Funds the church uses most of its financial resources to construct and maintain buildings and other facilities. The church also spends much of its funds on providing social welfare and relief and supporting missionary, educational, and other church-sponsored programs. Construction of Facilities The church builds additional chapels and temples as wards and branches of the church are organized. The church built about 40 smaller temples between 1998 and 2001. Currently, there are 124 operating temples, 6 under construction, and 5 announced, not yet under construction. Social Welfare and Relief The Church operates a welfare distribution system as it encourages members to seek financial assistance from family and church first before seeking public or state-sponsored welfare. AG Reserves Incorporated, Incorporated, Deseret Cattle and Citrus Ranch, and Farmland Reserve Incorporated are part of its welfare distribution system. Welfare resources are distributed by local bishops, but maintained by the presiding bishop. Other programs. The church also spends much of its money collected through tithing on numerous missionary, educational, and other programs which the church considers to be within its mission. Although the families of missionaries generally pay $400 a month for missions, additional general funds of the church support missionaries unable to pay for their own missions. Additionally, the church provides a mission office and mission home for each of its 300 missions and pays for television advertising, offering free copies of the Book of Mormon, the Bible, church videos, etc. The church also owns and subsidizes education at its three universities. It also supports Boy Scout programs for young men. In addition, it supports its seminary and institute programs with tithing money. Programs Church Educational System Latter-day Saints believe in the value of education. Joseph Smith taught that the glory of God is intelligence. Accordingly, the church emphasizes education maintaining Brigham Young University, Brigham Young University, Idaho, formerly Ricks College, and Brigham, Hung, Brigham Young University, Hawaii. The church also has religious education programs. Seminary is a program for high school students held daily in conjunction with the school year. The Institutes of Religion program serves young adults between the ages of 18 and 30, and those enrolled in post-secondary education institutions with church-owned buildings near college campuses designed for the purpose of religious education and cultural socialization. In addition, the church sponsors a low-interest educational loan program known as the Perpetual Education Fund. This fund is designed to benefit young men and women from all parts of the world who have served a mission, returned to their home, and need further education to become productive citizens in their respective countries. As they finish their education and enter the workforce, they are then able to pay back the funds provided so that other individuals can attend both vocational, technical schools, and university. Missionary Program Young men between the ages of 19 and 26 who are considered worthy, follow the teaching of the church, are encouraged to consider a two-year full-time proselytizing mission. Women who serve a mission must be at least 21 and generally serve 18-month missions. Elderly, retired couples are encouraged to serve missions as well and their length of service varies from 3 to 36 months. Elderly adult women also occasionally serve a mission of varying lengths. Today there are more than 330 missions and approximately 56,000 full-time proselytizing missionaries 
serving throughout the world. In addition, about 5,100 missionaries are on special assignment missions, serving as healthcare specialists, doctors, craftsmen, artisans, construction supervisors, agricultural experts, and educators for developing countries, and educators, family history researchers, and leadership trainers. Go to the LDS.org website, the official website of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, with links to Gospel Library, Church History, Family Home Evening Programs, and more. Mormon.org, information on basic beliefs, a meeting house locator, and a place to email questions.